So today we're going to review a video which says this video will make you better at math. So of course, when I saw that title, I thought, great, let's have a look at it. I've no idea what's inside of it. So I look forward to reacting to this video and watching it with you guys. So let's see if this video really makes you better at math. First, draw a circle with diameter one. Next, draw a square around it so the circle is perfectly inscribed in the square. Notice that this square has perimeter 4. If you add up all the lengths of its sides, each side is length 1, you get 4. Now remove the corners of the square and connect the shape to the circle in this way. Mm -hmm. Notice by symmetry, the perimeter of this shape has not changed. It's still 4. If we keep removing the corners in this fashion, the perimeter of the shape around the circle is still 4. Repeat this out to infinity, and we'll see that this process maps the shape onto the circumference of the circle. I think this is making a really good point about how when you have a shape which uh, you know is a rectangle or a square and you make indentations inwards, you actually maintain the perimeter, but the area changes. However, repeating that process to infinity might not be possible because at some point you're not going to have indentations anymore. So I'm not really sure where this is going. It's probably going to tell you that four is equal to pi and be incorrect, but I, I really look forward to seeing um, where this is going. What is the circumference of a circle? We know it's diameter times pi. In this case, 1 times pi is pi, that's the circumference of this circle. But the perimeter of this shape approached that circumference, and its length was 4. So pi is 4. Mm -mm. <laughs> Unless this is the conclusion that you want to make, and I don't think that it is, we need to figure out what's going wrong with this. Fact is, this illustration doesn't prove anything. It just sort of feels right. And maybe not even that. To mathematically justify this, let's look at a similar version of the problem. Draw a unit square and its diagonal. Let's use a similar process to try to figure out what the length of this diagonal is. So an interesting point here is that when you have a square of side length 1, 1 and 1, using Pythagoras theorem, the diagonal is root 2. Root 2 is about 1.4, um, so let's see where the argument goes with this. If we follow the perimeter from one end to the other, we see that this path length is 2. Cut out the upper corner of this region and travel the perimeter again, we'll see that this again is path length 2. Repeat over and over out to infinity, the length of the path is still 2. This is still and correct. our path approaches the path of the diagonal. So should we conclude that the length of this diagonal is 2? No. <laughs> and the answer is, of course not. The problem with this is that just because one path approaches another, it doesn't mean that the length of the path approaches the length of the other. How can we mathematically show this? We can say that the staircase path approaches the diagonal by looking at the area between them. If this area shrinks to zero, we'll say that the staircase path approaches the diagonal path. Let n be the number of iterations in this process. So when n equals 1, we have one step making a triangle with base 1 and height 1. When n equals 2, we'll have two steps with base 1 half and height 1 half. Still so correct. for a general n times 1 half times 1 over n times 1 over n, we have n triangles, each with area 1 half base times height. In other words, the area of the nth iteration of our process is 1 over 2n. And we can see this area shrink to zero by taking the limit out to infinity. Thus, we conclude that the staircase path does indeed approach the diagonal path. However, if we do a similar process for the lengths of these paths, starting at n equals 1, 
the staircase as a path length is 1 plus 1 is 2. At n equals 2, the staircase has path length 1 half plus 1 half times 2 is 2. Still 2. Our path length is 2 regardless of what the iteration number is. Mm -hmm. And if we take the limit out to infinity, the limit of a constant is a constant. We still get 2. But we know the true length of this diagonal by the Pythagorean theorem. Just say 1 squared plus 1 squared equals the diagonal's length squared. The diagonal's length is square root of 2, which is different from the path length of our staircase. One path approaching another does not mean that the path lengths are equal. And this logic exposes the fallacy that pi equals 4. This paradox was fun. You'll especially like this one. Click the video on the screen to check it out. I'll see you in that one. I think this highlighted a really interesting problem. And um, I think as long as there is a staircase, the path length will be two. But you need to have these little indents. And the moment that you say that those indents are going to infinity, they're not indents anymore because there's going to be no area and they're going to flatline. So even if you had microscopic indents, which go up and across, up and across, up, up and across, you would still have a length of two. So this is true so long as you don't have um, no more area. So the argument there which was made is that as the area becomes zero, the path length becomes two, and that's not true because you can't have the area between the line and the staircase be zero because then you just have a straight line and not a staircase. So the moment you get rid of the staircase, you have an issue and you have a fallacy. I hope you enjoyed this little video. This is not the only time that there is a fallacy in mathematics. You can, you can make proofs which are a little bit wonky and give you kind of strange results. It doesn't always mean that they're correct, Spe specifically when you, when you find some uh, problems where you can do like some divisions and get rid of a factor, you can prove that three is equal to zero or five is equal to one. Um, so I, I don't know if the one half equal one third video that's proposed afterwards is one of those, but it, it is interesting and you've got to be very cautious, if anything, when you make proofs to not say that something which is a little bit dubious can absolutely prove something else. So you've got to make sure that you're rigorous when you prove something. Uh, this was an interesting exercise, nevertheless, and I hope you enjoyed watching this video. See you on the next one. Bye-bye.